So, what we're going to be looking at today are what we call our double angle identities. I really don't like angles represented by a lowercase letter like that. We normally use an uppercase letter and I just think it looks really weird. And you'll see why in a minute. So let's derive the formulas. We've done this once before. Let's just quickly do it. So if we had the sign, if we wanted the sign of 2a, that's like the sign of a plus a, that's simply going to come from same sign sandwich, sign of your first angle. I'm going to use uppercase A because can you see how weird that looks? Right sign, middle A. Let's pretend these are uppercase A's. Sine of A times the cosine of the second angle, which is also A, same sign. Then cosine of your first angle times the sine of your second angle. And we looked at these before, these last week. This and this are exactly the same thing. When you multiply, order doesn't matter. So this tells us that the sine of 2a could be written as 2 times sine of a times cos of a. That is what we call the double angle identity for sine. On this side of the equal sign, we have a double angle, an angle that's been doubled. On this side of the equation, in two places, we have a single angle. This is telling us that say we were given the sign of 60 degrees would be like the sine of 2 times 30 degrees. It's 30 doubled. So it's 2 times the sine of the single angle times the cosine of the single angle. On this side, you have the single angle. On this side, you have the doubled angle, 30 times 2. So that's how it works for sine. We also did it for tangent. Tangent of x plus x would be tangent of your first angle plus tangent of your second angle for both x's divided by 1 minus the tangent of the first angle times the tangent of the second angle. So this simplifies to, oops, you've got 2 of the tangent of x on the top. 2 times the tangent of x on the top, 1 minus the tangent squared of x in the denominator. We also did this for cosine. That's all. Oh. That's your double angle formula for tangent. Notice on this side, this is the double angle side. And on the other side of the equal sign, here and here, you've got the single angles. We're on the single angle side of the identity on this side. It's an identity, it's true for all values of x for which the tangent exists for those, two, those angles. Okay, now let's look how we did this before for cosine. If we wanted the cosine of two, I don't mind if you use a's or x's, let's use a's again. That would come from the cosine of a plus another a. That gives you 2x. So this is cosine of the first times cosine of the second. And we list the cosines and we change that plus to minus, list the signs. So from this, the double angle formula for cosine is the cosine squared of your single angle minus the sine squared of your single angle. The cosine of the doubled angle, cosine of the double angle equals the cosine squared of the single angle minus the sine squared of the single angle. Right, we're gonna, this one here takes different forms. Let's have a look at them. 
there are three different ways of writing this double angle formula for cosine. If we just bear in mind the identity that cos squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. I could replace cosine squared x when I see it using this identity here. If I just want cosine squared x, I'd have to subtract the sine squared x to the other side. Okay, so this would be cos of 2x equals where I see cos squared x in its place, I can write 1 minus sine squared x. But I also have that minus sine squared x. That part. Okay. Let's clean that up. This gives me cos squared x equals 1 minus, and I basically am subtracting two lots of sine squared x, so two times sine squared x. That is your second form of this identity. This was the main form. That was the one we started with. And there are three different forms. So that's two of them. To get the third form, I'm going to go back to this first form, but this time I'm going to replace sine squared x with something. I know from up here, sine squared x to get this on its own, I'd have to subtract the cosine to the other side. Okay, so let's write down what we had at the beginning there. We had cos 2x equals, I'm going to leave this as it was, cos squared x minus, but I'm replacing the sine squared x replacing this with 1 minus cos squared x. Oh, and I'm subtracting it, so I need parentheses there. Because when you distribute that subtraction, this minus sign here will turn into a plus. So what this gives me is cos 2x equals cos squared x minus 1 plus distribute that net minus which gives me cos of 2x equals, I've got one of them plus another one of them, I've got 2 times cosine squared of x minus 1. That's our third form of the cosine identity. Right, I've got them summarized for you on one screen here. So if you haven't got them written down, and don't worry, the homework is, you can print it from online. It's a, you can print it as a worksheet if you want, or you can go straight to the textbook. It's on page 352 of the textbook. So what we're doing today is, this is lesson 5.5-1. It's day one of double angle identities. And we have a double angle identity for the sine of the double angle, the tangent of the double angle, and the cosine of the double angle. But there's only one form for sine, there's only one form for tangent. But when you get to the cosine, stop and think. There are three forms. Just think, just for a little bit, which form will make the math easier? going to depend very much on the question you're given. Okay, it's only cosine that we have three forms to remember. And the good news is we always print these on the test. These ones you're not going to have to remember. The other and some different identities you do have to remember. These ones you don't. We're going to print them on the test for you. Okay, so moving on, let's use a few of these. So let's quickly just remind ourselves what they are. Sine, the double sine angle is two times the sine of the single angle times the cosine of the single angle. 
um, tangent of the double angle equals two times the tangent of the single angle over one minus tangent squared of the single angle. And then for cos of the double angle, we had three formats, cos squared single angle minus sine squared single angle, or we can use two times the cosine squared minus one, or we can use one minus the sine squared of the single angle. Okay, those are the identities that'll be printed for you on a test. So looking at question number one, do you recognize what we've been given there? We've been given this side of the double angle identity for sine, but instead of x, instead of a, we've been put given x's. So when you're given this side, it is equal to and can be replaced. We've been given the single angle side, we can replace it with the double angle side. So I'm just writing out sine of two, but I'm not going to write a, I'm going to write x. That was it. Very, very simple question. I'm not, there's a whole load of other questions on here, but they're really more the focus of tomorrow's lesson. I'm just going to do a few of the easier ones on here today, just give you an idea. None of these are on your homework tonight, but they're always on the test and they will be on the homework tomorrow. So let's have a look at this. Can you see that again, this looks a little bit like the single angle side of the sine. It looks, I'm thinking of this when I look at it, sine of 2a equals 2 times sine of a cos of a, but I've got a problem. That's the identity. This is the double angle identity. That's not what the question's given me. The question hasn't given me a two, it's given me a six. It's told me though that my single angle my a equals 40, but I've got to do something with this 6. This question is saying 6 times the sine of 40 times the sine of 40. When you've got something that's a multiplication problem, you can always factor it. We could break 6 down into its factors. 6, we could write as 3 times 2. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to replace this, but where I see 6, I'm going to write 3 times 2 times the sine of 40 degrees times the cosine of 40 degrees. That is this, where my single angle is 40 degrees. When I see this stuff inside those green parentheses, I can write this instead. I can't get rid of the three, the three is still there. It's just the stuff inside the green that can be replaced with that double angle form. So what I've got here is I've got three times the double angle. I'll just do the math. Three times the sine of 80 degrees. Two times 40 being 80 degrees. So this bit here was me replacing the single angle side with the double angle side. I replaced the right side of the equation with the left side of the equation. Things that are equal replacing each other. So let's give you a minute and see what you can do on questions two and five then. Just a minute. Okay, so on that first one, what I'm looking at, when I look at that, I can see that basically looks a little bit, oh, I've written that incorrectly, I can't believe that was written correctly. I've basically got this, but I, I'd have to factor eight out. So 
So this is, I've been given eight times the single angle side. So I'm going to replace it with eight times the double angle side. And this, of course, is the double angle for cosine. Where did the 70 degrees come from? This was the single angle from the single angle side. And I replace it with the doubled angle. There, the angle doubled. And the next one, if you factor out a five, we've got five times cosine squared x minus sine squared x. So we've got five times this, which can be replaced with five times this. But we haven't got a's in here, we've got x's. So it's just five times this with x written instead of a. This time we have to stop there because we don't know what x is. There's nothing more we can do to the answer. So these are fairly simple. We'll practice all those tomorrow. We can make them a bit a little harder than work with tangents. That's not our main focus for today. For today, we want to use two different types of questions. We're going to do some questions where we have to evaluate, and we're going to do some other questions where we have to solve. So let's have a look at, we're probably just going to do cosine and tangent on this one, we'll leave the sign. And then we'll have a look at solving some equations. So first of all, we'll look at the information we've been given. We know that the cosine of an angle theta, see this is the single angle. Look at our questions. We're all looking at the double angle. So what do we know about this angle? First of all, look at this. That tells us our angle lies somewhere between zero and pi. It's either in quadrant one or quadrant two. We've only got one angle here. It can't be in both quadrants. It can only be in one of them. So what does this information tell us? If a cosine is negative, a cosine comes from your ratio of x divided by r. Your r isn't negative, so your x must be. We must be in quadrant 2 or quadrant 3 if the x is negative. Where do those overlap? The, other, the first part gave us quadrants 1 or 2. This part gave us 2 or 3. They overlap in quadrant 2. So let's draw a triangle to describe theta. Draw the angle. That's our angle theta. Now, to solve these questions, cosine and tangent, we're going to need to know we've been given the cosine of theta as negative 5 thirteenths. We're probably also going to need to know the sine of theta and the tangent of theta. Sine is your y divided by your r, tangent is your y divided by your x. So we need a triangle, and we need to label x, y, and r. So draw a right triangle. We know the x is 5, the r is 13, one of them is negative, must be the x. And that triangle, I hope you know, it's a Pythagorean triple. You could use x squared plus y squared equals r squared if you don't recognize this one. But you're going to work out that y is 12. And y is positive 12 because in quadrant 2, your y is going up. If this had been in quadrant three, your y would be negative 12. Be careful about your positives and negatives. So if we need it, the sine of theta is your y, which is 12, divided by the r, which is 13. And the tangent would be a, a positive divided by a negative, so it would be negative, and 12 divided by 5. If I need those, do well. So let's evaluate the following. If I want to use a cosine of 2 theta, I've got a choice of three, uh, three formulas. On this question, would it be easier if I just use sines, just use cosines, or does it matter if I use a combination of the two? On this one, I, this question, it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to say the cosine of the double angle is the cosine squared of the single angle minus the sine squared of the single angle. So I've got something squared 
minus something else squared. What is my cosine of theta? Look up here. It's minus 5 thirteenths. What's my sine of theta? It's 12 thirteenths. So let's do the math now. Squaring things, and it's negative. The negative value squared is going to be positive. This will be 25 over 169. This will be 144 over 169. The denominator is clearly 169. It's going to be, ooh, it's going to be negative. I'm cheap. We're subtracting something bigger than what we start with. 144 take away 25 gives you 190. Okay, so I did the easy one for you. I did the cosine of 2 theta. You try the tangent of 2 theta. You know, this one, you're gonna, it's going to take a little longer. You're working with fractions and you need the practice. So let's give you two minutes on this one. 120 over 119. Who got it right? Anyone? Okay, I think I need to go over this with you then. Let's, let's have a look at this then. So if I'm going to find the tangent of the double angle, I'm going to use the double angle formula. The angle doubled is two times the single angle, which I know stuff about, 1 minus tangent squared, the single angle. And when, if we look up above here, we worked out that the tangent of theta is negative 12 over 5. So let's put that in. I've got 2 times negative 12 over 5, all over 1 minus negative 12 over 5 squared. Let's sort that out. So on the top, we've got negative 24 over 5, 2 times negative 12. Don't turn the 5 into a 10. That's like 2 over 1 times negative 12 over 5. And in the bottom, I've got 1 minus. When I'm squaring the negative, it becomes positive. Now I'm going to need to rewrite this one here as 25 over 25. So I can write one fraction in the numerator and one fraction in the denominator. Twenty-five minus one forty-four, that is, I've already done that, that's one one nine. And it'd be negative. Okay, so let's Keep the numerator. Well, it's a negative divided. Oh, I'll do it for you. Negative divided by a negative. They're gonna cancel. Keep the numerator, change, division to multiplication, and then write the reciprocal of your denominator. Okay? When you're multiplying the negative times a negative, you're gonna get a positive. Those are gone. 5 goes into 25 five times. So I'm left with 24 times 5 in the numerator and 1 times 119 in the denominator. 24 times 5. I don't know it. But I knew, do know that 25 times 5, imagine you had 5 quarters in your pocket. That's 125. So 24 times 5 will be 5 less than that. So it's just going to be 120. That's common core math for you. Okay, that was that. The tangent ones are the harder, harder ones. Let's move on now. There's one more thing we have to cover today. I, we could do some more practice. If, you, if you're struggling with your homework and you want to see some more worked examples, I might do this one as a separate video if I get a chance, but I can't see that's going to happen today. I know I've got a busy day today. But that's, this was when we evaluate, we're finding the value of something. We're just ending up with a number. 
we also need to do some questions where we have to solve. On these ones, we've been given an equation and we have to solve it for the variable. The variable we've been given is x, and you can tell us we're taking the cosine or sine of it, and what it says here, x is an angle somewhere between 0 and 360 degrees. Okay, and it doesn't equal either 0 or 2 pi, that's unusual, that normally has that, doesn't it? Okay, so we've got to solve these equations we've been given for x. The biggest mistake I see, when you look at this, you see here, this is a different angle. We have different angles on both sides. We can't solve an equation when the angles are different we've got to have the same angle on both sides. Please never ever do this. I see this too often. People go, well, I don't like that too, so I'm going to divide both sides by two, and they cancel that. That's, that's not good. You can't do that. This expression here does not mean cosine times two times x. It's cosine of two x. Um, to understand why you can't do this math, let's look at the example. If you had 8 squared, that could be written as 2 times 4 squared. Can you say, okay, I'm just going to divide out that 2? Is it true that 8 squared over 2 divided in 2 is the same as 4 squared? Can you cancel something inside another function? No, it's absolutely not true. 8 squared would be 64, 64 divided by 2 would be 32, 4 squared is 16. You cannot cancel out something inside a function. If you do that, you've made what was a quite a tricky problem into a, a low level problem by doing bad math that isn't true. I technically can't give you any credit for the question after that because you've really changed the question to a much easier question. When you have different angles in the equation, you've got to rewrite the, equa rewrite the equation. So it's in terms of one angle only. These are notes. You wouldn't normally write this when you're solving the problem yourself, but please write notes like this in your notes so you know what you're doing in future when you come across it. So, when I see the cosine of 2x, I know I've got three choices. I could rewrite the cosine of 2x as cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x, or I could replace the cosine of 2x with um, 2 times cosine squared of x minus 1, or I guess that's 1 minus 2 times the sine squared of x. There are three choices, there's three identities for the double angle for cosine. I'm going to use this version here. When I see cosine of 2x, I'm going to replace it with 1 minus 2, two sine squared x. The reason being, I've also got this in the equation, and it'd be really nice if the equation's got nothing but signs in it. Okay? So, I'm going to replace this cos 2x with 1 minus 2 sine squared x. And I know that it still equals minus the sine of x. So that's my new equation. I've rewritten the equation just by using a replacement, using one of the identities. Now I look at this equation and what I'm thinking, it's quadratic. It's squared. When an equation is squared, what we want to do is we want to get in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. We always want to make it equal zero, so we can factor it and use the zero product rule. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is factor this equation. 
Now, do I want to move the pink stuff to the green side or the green to the pink? Which way makes more sense? It looks easier at the first glance to, to just add a sign of X to both sides, but that'd be a bad idea. I'm going to move all the pink stuff to the green side. Can anyone see why? The reason is, when I want to factor something, it's way easier if my, my square term, I want this to be plus. I want plus something x squared. I definitely don't want minus something squared. It's much harder to factor. So I'm going to move, move all the stuff on the left to the right. So I'm going to add two times, so I'll be left with zero. I'll have two times the sine squared of x. The next thing on the right is just my x term. And then this one will be subtracted to go to the other side. So I just made the left side of the equation equal zero by subtracting one and adding two times the sine squared of x to both sides. Okay, now let's factor that. When I factor it, I'm using reverse foil. What I write here and here is going to come from the first term. This middle term comes from the outer plus the inner. That's my last term. So to get a first term of two sine squared x, I'm going to have two times the sine of x multiplied by the sine of x. Then you look at the last and say, what are your factors of one? Well, they've got to be one and one, but it's negative, it's subtracting, so one of them must be plus, one must be minus. Look at your inner term. I mean, this, out, this middle term here has to come from this plus this. One times sine x from the inner. The outer gives me two times the sine of x. Put them together and I need minus the sine of x. Which one needs to be negative? Obviously, this one needs to be negative. That one needs to be positive. So this one must be plus one. This one must be minus. Okay? Always check that middle term when you're factoring. Don't need that work shown. Right, now it's factored. The reason we factor it when it's equal to zero, this only works at it equals zero. I know that either any of my factors must equal zero. Oops, must equal zero. This one, if I subtract one and divide by two, gives me the sine of x is snake of a half. This factor gives me the sine of x equals 1. So I have to solve these now, so they're two separate problems. A sine is a y divided by an r, so if it's negative, my angle must be in quadrant 2, I mean quadrant 3 or quadrant 4, but the y is minus 1, the r is 2. Now is that a 45, 45, 90 or a 30, 60, 90? It's a 30, 60, 90, not a 45, 45, 90, or the R would be in the square root of 2. And this angle here is opposite the short side. So my reference angle is based on 30 degrees, which is pi by 6. I've got one answer in quadrant 3, one answer in quadrant 4. If in quadrant three, my angle, which is called x, if it's based on 30 degrees, it's been on the matrix of six. So 7 pi by 6 is if I'm in quadrant three. And in quadrant four, it must be 11 pi by 6. Do you remember how to find those numerators? In quadrant one, you do the numerator minus one. In quadrant two, you do the, I mean, the denominator minus one, denominator plus one. This one is 2 times the denominator minus 1. 2 times 6, take away 1, which is 11. 11 by 6. Okay, so that was from that first factor. That's given me two solutions so far, but I now have to look at this one. And this angle 
if the r equals the y it must be quadrantal and it's quadrantal we don't draw a triangle we draw a circle of radius one and if the circle the radius is positive so i need to know where is where on this does y equal one what point on this circle is the right coordinate plus one to that point there that represents this angle which is pi by two Okay, let's go back, double check we've answered the question. Solve each for zero is less than two, x is less than two pi. So I was getting angles for answers somewhere between zero and two pi. Okay, and if you wanted to, you could substitute those angles into the original equation. You should find both sides are equal. Right, let's have a look at the second problem here. The next problem we've been given, oh, I've written stuff in the way, is this one here. Let's, this, let's move this out of the way. Again, notice we've got a mixture of angles. We've got a double angle. And a single angle in the same equation. We can't solve it like that. The first step is going to be, again, to rewrite our equation in terms of only one angle. And we're going to choose the single angle by replacing the cosine of 2x with something just using the angle x. This time, because the other thing we've got there is also a cosine, I'm going to use this choice down here. When I see the cosine of 2x, I'm going to replace it with 2 times cosine squared of the single angle, minus 1. Then I've got the, the rest of it set plus 4 cos x um, equals negative 3. Again, it's quadratic, so I'm going to make it equal 0. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So I'll have 2 times the cosine squared of x. I'll write cosine term next, minus 1 plus 3 is plus 2, and now it equals 0. I can factor this by putting out a GCF this time. Okay. Let's move this out of the way. So let's factor that. This is my first, this is my outer plus my inner, this is my last. So the first must be cos of x times cos of x to get cos squared x, to get one at the end and one here and one here. This is positive, so what goes here and here must be the same. And to get plus, plus two cos x, I must have plus one cos x plus another one cos x. That does give me plus two cos x. Always check that middle term. Now we know that one of our factors equals zero. Well, that's a factor. Is it true that two equals zero? No, that's junk. It's obviously nothing to do with that. But could the cosine of x plus one equal zero? Yes, we've got a repeating factor. Those are both going to give us the same solution. Cosine of x equals negative 1, that's quadrantal, draw a circle, cosines are your horizontal, where's our horizontal coordinate, minus 1, here, our x equals pi, our angle x, as opposed to our x in the ratio of x over r, yuck. This is why normally, 
for angles in trig functions, we hardly ever, it's not nice when we use x because this x and this x here are different, talking about different things. This is why we usually use theta for angles or a letter other than x, y, or r. Okay, so we're actually done with the lesson today. Um, let me see, I've been sent some messages here. Let me pause the video.